just coming upon the Apoidian Gardens. Thought I would visit them since they're so close, and in the newest update, we can actually explore this wonder now. Plus, this place just looks amazing. I hear a London monitor somewhere over here. Oh, there you are. What are you shooting? Probably just shooting bees, I guess. Using a sniper on bees. There's something very funny about that. I'm just rolling up to this wonder, murdering all the bees. I don't know, they're fickle. Like, I could ditch all the Corister Nectar and hope they don't attack me, but sometimes they do. close. Uh-oh. Uh. Awkward. Oh god. Not more. I don't want to kill you all. Hold on. Let me get rid of this so it's not super loud. The flower fields. Your engine perches among the stalks, nestled between petals the size of gardens. Enormous flowers sprawl across the horizon, a welcoming forest. The petals are the color of mellow gold and vivid ruby. The scent of sticky pollen hangs in the air. Asphodel and drowsy cardamom. Asphodel? Harvest nectar. I'm already full. Linger in the flower fields. The leaves are dry. A good spot for a picnic. Some supplies. That's probably terror reduction. Or delve into the flowers. Takes a moment of inspiration. Oh, and I have to have the assaying device. Okay, this sounds really neat. Unlocked when you do not have the War of Flowers. What? Let's delve into the flowers. What lies beneath these towering thickets of flowers? A rotten layer of mulch and fallen petals lines the flower forest floor. Your boots are soon stained red gold. You push through the shrouded gloom until you come upon a grove, deep in the undergrowth. 
Great stems bend to form arches like cathedral vaults. A canopy of petals, gold and cerise, forms its roof. Within the grove a single flower grows, stunted and pale. It is a miniature of those that tower above it. Its petals are soft and fragile as spun sugar. Its stem is covered in mold. Yet in its shape and the sad echo of its colors, this little flower is the mirror of all those that now tower above it. Perhaps it was the first before its offspring outgrew it. You do not linger. Your crew are waiting for you back in the starlit sky. That's so interesting. And that's so sad. Perhaps it was the first before its offspring outgrew it. You've seen the flower that was caged. What does that mean? Like, what is that going to do? Anything? Went to Kirillin, cleared my soul, and now I'm back in Eleutheria. Let's head back to Caduceus. I don't want to head anywhere else first, because I don't want to risk messing up my soul and then having to do that again. And on the way to Caduceus, let's do a little exploring. We've got this pretty big patch unexplored here. I'm just going to cut straight through it towards Caduceus. Candlewings. Another candle wind going the opposite way. Anyway, looks like we've cut a path straight through it. Nothing really big in there. Alright, I'll see you at Caduceus. At Caduceus. Let's see the winds of elsewhere on the dark side so we can reduce our terror. <clears throat> okay, now we can actually do some stuff. Let's get a port report. And finally, participate in the Rite of the Rose. For those suitably attuned, if the Thorn Maiden is willing to perform the Rites of the Rose, it is the great mystery at Caduceus's heart. The Thorn Maiden rises from her throne and strikes a single bell. Rosebinders advance on the throngs, passing out garlands of thorns. A rosebinder wearing a mask of thorns and petals passes you a garland. It fits about your neck easily, like a stole. It reeks like a bottle of perfume left out in the sun. Your fellow visitors to Caduceus are approaching the throne, their arms outstretched, their eyes agleam. The Thorn Maiden turns away from the supplicants and faces the marble wall behind the throne. She raises her arms and lifts the crown from her head. The rest is lost in a crest of sudden sunlight that crashes over the temple like a golden wave. The roses are in full bloom. <clears throat> As your eyes adjust to the, to the illegal radiance of the sudden sunlight, you can see that the Arboretum has been entirely transformed. The statues are covered and crowned in wild roses of every possible color. 
Impossible roses bloom on the throne and on the marble slabs on the ground. Celebrants run through fields of brightly hued flowers, drinking and dancing and laughing. Roses bloom, soon they will fade. Okay, so I don't want to do too much. Because if I waste too much time, they're just going to fade and then I'll probably have to spend three more points of inspiration. But surely I can do a couple things, right? Cavort amongst the roses. Bohemians run through the roses with wild abandon. Some dance, others fall, pulling others down beneath the petals with them. Ah. The roses run wild and verdant in the temple forecourt. You stumble through the undergrowth, dazzled by the variegated flowers and dulled by their perfumes. A poet with eyes like a stormy sea approaches you. His fingertips are bleeding, dripping crimson to the wild flower carpet. Bidden, he cries, displaying his bloody fingers. Oh, the insatiate rose. Approach the thorn maiden. She stands apart from the celebrations. Faithful acolytes surround her. A poet places a garland of silver roses around her neck and bids her follow him to the caverns, where they might gaze on the moon together. The thorn maiden laughs and turns away. A bacchant with wild eyes takes the thorn maiden's hand in her own, coiling their fingers together like serpents in a nest. The thorn maiden smiles distantly, extricates her hand and turns to a third, a fiddler with eyes flecked with gold. I think you are ready. The roses have taken enough of you. She ignores you entirely. The roses have taken enough of you. Okay, so I think I need to succeed at these things. Like, do stuff with the roses. Are all of these going to take a part of me? Um, why can't I do this? Wait until the roses have almost faded to participate in the mystery of beholding. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's try to cavort amongst the roses again. Man, come on. Dew drips from roses sweetening with rot. You have about half your time left before the roses fade entirely. You gotta be kidding me. Finally. The divine Elagabalus never knew such indulgence. Roses in a multitude of colors, blue, emerald, violet, and carnelian open from the temple roof, showering celebrants with petals. The Arboretum is a riot of laughter and song. You sip dew wine, kiss lips sticky with it, sing along to the throbbing of the drums beneath your feet. Whenever you stumble, a rose binder is at your side to right you and guide you back to the revel. The air is sickly sweet with decay. Still not time to participate here. Wait until the roses have almost faded. <clears throat> What if I just rest among the roses? This isn't even a skill check. How long since you've known peace? You lay your head on a cushion of wild roses. Several other celebrants have had the same idea and lie alone, in pairs or in affectionate tangles. As you drift off, you see the red-masked rose binders making their way through the field of the slumbering, laying petals on the sleeper's eyes. You dream of a sunlit garden, where wine flows like honey, languorous and sweet. The air is filled with a drowsy humming and a quiet hissing. You have time for only one more activity here. Okay, so that's gotta be... Uh, where is it? Here it is, the mystery of beholding. A few celebrants have entered the Hall of the Fiddler. As you join the group, a rose binder places their hands on your shoulders. 
They steer you through the rose-covered portico and into the little shrine. Here a copse of roses the size of church windows bloom. Some are saffron-hued, others crimson, others azure. Don't be afraid, the rose binder at your ear says. Look inside. They have something to show you. Peer into a saffron rose, a crimson rose, or an azure rose. Oh, or a white rose. Hmm, this one suggests gift, gift, gift. This one suggests loss. I'm attracted to that one. It's very interesting. And it also reminds me of the white flower from the Apoidian Gardens. You can hear nothing within. Loss emanates from the pale flower. The petals shiver and open slightly, as though they want to be opened fully. <clears throat> The flower unfurls to show you a vision of yourself alone. No crew, no engine, just you and the mirror facing each other. The mirror begins to devour you. Your reflection shivers as pieces of your flesh slicken and shiver the glass, running down the mirror in rivulets of blood. <laughs> a rosebinder pulls you away. Hmm. You've given something to the roses. Return from the rites. The roses fade like the tide withdrawing from the shore. The sweeping of the petals. The roses fade, the sunlight washes away, leaving only a memory of radiance. The rose binders approach the debris of the rose rites, armed with brooms and dustpans. Leave them to it. The red masks bear down upon the temple. The devils make light work of the sweet-smelling chaos of fallen petals, broken hedgerows, and shattered glass. Theirs is a practice craftsmanship. Within minutes, the temple is as it was before the rites, as though the sunlight and the roses never were. <clears throat> Talk to the Ubulant Decadent. What do I need for that? Oh, I just need a bit more Bohemia. I probably have something for that. Surely I must. Yeah, here we go. And I think I have to leave and come back in. There we go. A poet with a tangle of violent red hair is staring at you. Captain, he calls. What does he want? For this, I have to be admitted into the mysteries of Caduceus. I don't have whatever that is. Captain, he beams at you. You'll have heard of me, or my poems. Well, although, perhaps you haven't. I get censored, so... His eyes are wide and wild. My muse is disapproved of. I came to Eleutheria to be inspired, and my god, I have been. I've written panegyrics to our dark star, odes to the maiden who resides here. But I cannot get published in London, he sniffs, frowns, smiles once more. Please, take my latest to my publisher, Storages, in London. It's better than my last, but they won't even read it. Pass it off as yours, please say you will. He pushes a sheaf of yellowing pages into your hand. Thank you. Sure. Can I talk to the throne maiden? Like anything, or thorn maiden rather? Anything new? You must not only participate in the rites, but learn some of their mysteries. I have not done that yet. <clears throat> this place is a massive moment of inspiration sink. My god. <laughs> Explore the temple. I think that's just a description. Yes. The caverns, probably nothing to do there, but let's check. Yes. Let's participate in the rite again.
You've given of yourself to the rose. Is it enough? I mean, probably not. I don't want to waste time seeing if I'm ready when I'm almost certainly not. I don't know. Let's try. Oh, they're actually paying attention to me now. The Thorn Maiden considers you for several moments. Finally, she shakes her head. You are still not ready for... Um... Yuri Faisa? When the petals are about to fade, when the roses offer you much, give instead. You are still too much yourself. As you turn away, she reaches out to you. Her hand is cool. Her copper bracelet taps your forearm. The rose is palest before it falls. She releases your arm and turns away. Okay, give something instead of getting something right, so do not choose the gifts. Well, I made the right choice before then. So then I think this other stuff that I can do here is just kind of for my own benefit. I don't think it affects the right. I gotta wait till the end. So let's try to do some stuff. Take a gift of the rose. 100% <clears throat> chance of success. Celebrants wander among the roses, naming and entreating them to offer up jewels held in the petals. A celebrant with lobelia tangled in his hair leads you to a patch of roses blooming in red and black and gold. Each gleams with something akin to dew. The youth pulls back the petals of the nearest, exposing a jewel. Broad as an athlete's thigh and faceted as the mortal soul, nestling in the rose's maw. Only take one. They will be affronted should they all be plucked at once. He offers no further explanation. Which will you take? Hmm. Gold, black, or red? An onyx, a stone as black as the paintings of Lucifer. The black rose draws back its petals like veils as you reach in to grasp the onyx. It's cold to the touch and stains your palm. A promise, the celebrant says, a hungry smile on his face. They promise such wonderful things, as long as we return. Promise such wonderful things as long as we return. So this place, it sounds kind of like a... almost like a trap. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just give and take, though, right? Like, they give all of this bounty for a very short amount of time, and then we give something back to it. Cavort amongst the roses. <sighs> Let's do something new. Let's kiss a rose. 56% chance of success. Oh no. That just fucked up my soul. Don't tell me that. Oh no. Sweetness as bitter as tears. You bend to a rose the shade of a smoldering sun. The scent is of burning jasmine. The color drew your eye in. Your tongue follows. The taste is as the ashes as Savonarola raining down on Florence. Drops of nectar wash down your throat like stolen sips of wine. Despite the bitterness, you feel a yearning inside your stomach. It is as though you swallowed the longings of a sun. It passes in moments. <clears throat> swallowed the longings of a sun. Is this place related to the suns? And the stuff they eat? Remember how the repentant devil... Studied what sons eat? Rest among the roses. Mm. Examine the roses, 33% chance of success. Wow. You carefully peel open a 
great azure rose, blooming on the head of a statue. A wash of perfume spills out, heady as a uh, Benedictine, Benedictine wine? Within, the rose is wet with dew and nectar. Its stigma weeps silver tears. They are saline to the taste, but smell of wild honey. Okay, mystery of indulgence. This one is different than what it was before. Celebrants throng a crimson-masked rose binder carrying a thyrsus. First, she draws your attention to a fountain of wine, scarlet as saint's blood. Then she gestures to the celebrants around her, their mouths red and hungry. Finally, she begins stamping in time to the beat of the drum, sounding from far below the temple. She offers indulgences. Which will you partake in? Wine, love, dance, or sorrow. This will reduce your hearts. Of course it will. <laughs> In sorrow, need to give something of myself. Give of yourself your tears. A rose binder offers you a chalice, decorated with serpents and devils, chained coil to hand. They listen attentively as you recite your litany of woe. They offer a fresh perspective on each sorrow, revealing something about each encounter that you had not considered before. In every instance, it makes the memory worse. When the chalice is full, it is taken away. Leave them to clean it up. Cold, lightless. Okay, so it messed up my soul, but not in a way that stops me from doing anything here. Whew, good. That would be brutal otherwise. Talk to the Bohemians. Visitors come and go from Caduceus, but all are generally of a similar temperament. A loche youth with acres of golden hair invites you into his little company. They sit before the throne, painting roses onto each other's bodies. A rose black as the liberation blooms on his white chest. A pair of twins have dabbed a pattern of roses linked like chains. It begins on the right of her neck and ends on the nail of his smallest left toe. An elderly poet, his mustaches ringed with roses, explains that they're merely passing the time. We're somewhat listless between the rites, he explains, when the sunlight pours through and we may taste the rose. Thorn Maiden. Okay. Now I can ask, what is going on here? What are the rose rites? The Thorn Maiden smiles and beckons you close. She whispers, There is a gate behind the glass. There is a kingdom that is not. There is a sky more sunless. There are promises that beguile and dreams that do not lie. All impossible all attainable. This was once an escape, now it shall be a union. Three powers conjoined like serpents on a staff. She leans back and looks away. Right. Well, they're talking about Parabola, that much I can gather. Kingdom behind the glass. I don't suppose I can go behind the glass. Maybe I'd have to participate in another rite of the rose, which I can't do at the moment. Maybe it's in the caverns. Follow the beating of the drums. No, that's still the same. Yeah, I'm almost certain there's more here. There's definitely more here. I think I must participate in the Rite of the Rose again. Right? Like, any point asking about the other things? No, that's just all the old explanations. Okay, yeah, I think that's it for now. 
I'm going to come back here when I have three more moments of inspiration, which actually shouldn't be too hard to get. I think I have an egg in the bank. So that can give me some Eleutherian mysteries and some inspiration, a couple more grievers, and I have more visions of the heaven to trade for moments of inspiration as well. But for now, I think I'm going to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm probably going to try to get more inspiration and also visit Paranesi. Beyond that, I'm not sure. <laughs>